Hi, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Lily Davudian, and I work on the Microsoft Defender for Cloud product team. I'm joined today by my colleague TJ Benasik from the Microsoft Sentinel Group. Today, we're really excited to share more about the updates we've recently made to the Threat Intelligence Workbook in Microsoft Sentinel. Threat intelligence is really an advanced cloud security discipline that focuses on leveraging indicators of compromise across the attack lifecycle to identify and respond to an attacker. The challenges that we currently see in this space are the fact that there's an overwhelming amount of indicators that reside in different cloud workloads and in different cloud environments and on-prem environments, but there's no simple way to correlate these indicators and operationalize and respond to this data. The power of the solution that, that we've, or the workbook that we've updated is really that we'll show you the indicators and the quality of them and if you've seen them in your environment. So using this workbook in Sentinel, you can detect malicious activity observed in your environment and we can give your security teams the context to help inform their response. The solution that we've we've put together really has two parts. First, we show you what indicators you're ingesting over time, which helps you create a baseline for your environment. And we also have an indicator search, which not only highlights what indicators have been observed over time, but also allows for a free text search by indicator across log sources and telemetry feeds. Again, the power of the workbook really lies in its ability to bring together previously disparate data, namely indicators of compromise across your environment, to detect potential threats to your organization and help protect against them. The, the primary use cases that we see are, are number one for SecOps professionals. So these are folks in your security operations centers who are actively working with incidents and alerts and building automations and really looking at the environment in the tier one and tier two disciplines. We also see this helping your threat intelligence teams who want to take it one step further to understand the threats, to understand why the organization is being targeted and to respond proactively. We also see the workbook as being a huge help for consultants and service providers that are actively assisting organizations with their security assessments and response. The value of this workbook, again, is really the ability not only to ingest your threat intelligence data, but to analyze it and to hunt for these indicators in your workloads. The workbook is based on over 100 different threat intelligence queries and visualizations. It will take the indicators and let you know what they are, the confidence rating, how they're observed in your environment, and what telemetry is at play. We've added a free text search that allows you to hunt for an indicator like an IP address across over 25 different Microsoft telemetry sources. The queries that we run are all dynamic display, meaning that if we execute 100 queries, you'll only see the results and visualizations where we have data, so you don't have to look through blank panels. All of this is also to highlight that you can do all of this free text search without any underlying knowledge required of Cousteau or KQL. So we're really excited to, to share this update and to help your teams bring together data sources in Microsoft in your third party and on-prem tooling and to use these indicators of compromise to better understand threats to your organization and to respond. So with that, I'll hand it over to TJ who will show us a quick demo. Hey team, I'm TJ Benastic with the Microsoft Sentinel product group. So I'm going to walk you guys through a quick demo of how to use this offering. We'll get started by accessing Microsoft Sentinel and we'll roll down to the workbooks blade. Now, the reason that we're starting in workbooks is the Microsoft Sentinel Threat Intelligence Workbook is something that we've had um, uh, for about the last year or so. This is the third revision, so there will be an update that you'll want to install to make sure you're getting the most recent version of the content. So you go over to my workbooks, you'll probably see an update noting that there is a threat intelligence update for the workbook. It'll likely be the color orange with the update version uh, in your environment. I've already updated, so mine is green. But when you see that indicator, you just go to update here, which will lay down the most recent version of the content in your workspace. After we've done the update, we'll go down to the threat intelligence blade. Uh, which is down here in the bottom left of the navigator. 
Threat intelligence is the feature of Microsoft Sentinel that we use to onboard our threat intelligence data and make it actionable within our security insights. And so what you'll see here is a summary of your indicators as well as where they're coming from. So a good place to get started, and I would encourage you guys to check out the documentation on how to do that. What we're gonna do is access the new threat intelligence workbook. You'll see it up here in the top right. And when we select that, it'll bring us into the Threat Intel workbook so we can begin our investigation and also check the health of our workloads as far as what data that we're onboarding. So when we come in, we have a guide uh, that will let us know what the workbook is and how we can use it, providing reference over to our documentation page. So if you're new to threat intelligence with Microsoft, this is going to be a great starting point, explaining uh, how we look at it, how we use it, how to onboard not only the outstanding Microsoft feed, but also the really great ones within the community as well, and, and how to make them actionable. And so after we get beyond the getting started, we can turn this to no which consolidates the offering a tad bit, making it easier for navigation. These are parameter-based filters. So if you're using a tenant, a multi-tenant, or a cross-tenant approach, especially if you're a large organization or a managed security service provider, you're able to aggregate all this data into a single pane. So keep that in mind uh, when you're going through here. For today, we're just gonna select my demo tenant. Um, but if I wanted to look at a lot more than that, I could just select all and make the scope much wider. As far as time range, that will depend on the length of our investigation. So the defaults are in here. If for any reason you wanna look further than that, you have the ability to customize that time range to any data set that you have available within Microsoft Sentinel. I will call out to the survey. So this being the third iteration of this content, we work very closely with the community to ensure that the information that we're providing is what you guys would like to see as far as an offering. So we've had outstanding feedback in this offering and that's really what's driving our update is to make sure that we're hearing the needs of the community and updating this to make it as actionable as possible. So some of the more notable updates that we've taken in through here are performance enhancements to make it faster, a reduction of visible queries to move away from a forensics approach and more into uh, a security operations response type approach. So you'll see the workbook is two tabs. So think of each one of these as its own sub workbook. So a visualization for you to look at your data a tad bit further. With indicators ingestion, we're able to see all of the threat feeds that are coming into Microsoft Sentinel, get an idea of the health of these feeds and also the quality of these feeds. So at the top, we see several feeds that are coming in over time. Uh, we have a seven day time threshold within here. The majority of our feeds are indicators of compromise for IP addresses. We do have some data for files, some others such as email senders, domains, DNS handles, URLs, um, but it seems like we're primarily IP address based. Um, we probably want that to be a tad bit more well-rounded, so that's the first indicator of maybe bringing on some more feeds to give us that visibility. We're able to count this by type and by feed, uh, so this is also highlighting that IP address is by far the majority of the indicators within this workspace. The Microsoft Emergent Threat Feed, which is in preview, is providing us a lot of that data. Um, that's one of my personal favorites as far as feeds. We have a few other ones that are feeding in here. So we've got a taxi server onboarding through the uh, taxi connector, which allows you to bring in your threat intelligence platform. So we have anomaly threat stream coming in with IP abuse feeds. Uh, the Microsoft Security Graph is providing a few indicators. Microsoft Sentinel has its own indicators that it's observed. Um, most of those are gonna be around alerts and incidents. So a tad bit more actionable seeing that data in practice. We have a Bing safety phishing URL and also some other Microsoft feeds. So this is gonna be different based on the environment. It'll be up to you guys to decide which feeds that you want and how to onboard them. So once they're in the environment, this becomes basically your buffet line of tools to conduct your threat intelligence research.
the bottom, we've got a few more panels to evaluate the confidence, the freshness uh, of these different feeds. And so this will really depend on what you're using, but you're able to just look at it in a little bit more depth to say, you know, uh, how many active indicators are coming in? What are the assessed confidence ratings? How fresh is this data? How actionable is this data? So really a lot more so about the health and maintenance of, of your feeds. Now that we're happy with our threat intelligence onboarding, we want to make this actionable. So this has been the biggest improvement in this next iteration of the workbook is when I see an indicator, I'm going to want to see that across all of my data, right? So if there is a bad or nefarious IP address, what's the most important to me is have I seen that IP address in my cloud workloads, in my multi-cloud workloads, my on-premise workloads, my hybrid workloads, any of the workloads that I'm monitoring with Microsoft Sentinel, I want to know if that indicator has ever been observed, right? Or at least within my time range of the last week. And so the indicator search is what I like to call the Bing of security. And so if nothing is inputted, it becomes a wild card. And what it's doing is searching indicators across all of my data tables to see if they're available. As a wild card, it's really just showing how many of these data tables that it's able to index. You'll notice that it was rather snappy. That's what we put in a lot of work to do is to make sure that this is fast to where you don't have to chomp over a ton of data. But you can see that we've got close to 250 different feeds and it's really not important. Just kind of check my slider bar for scope. It's looking in a lot of different places uh, for this data. We also have a look at indicators over time. This isn't necessarily important for now. You can get an idea of quantity as your diagnostics is the heaviest right now. Um, just keep in mind that that's a time-based story that I'm gonna show you when we start to add indicators and, and evaluate them through the environment. Here we have the threat intelligence alerts that are coming in. So Microsoft Sentinel Threat Intelligence is using that data and alerting you when things are being seen in your environment. And so there's a lot of different things that it's picking up within the last week. The emergent threat feed is finding botnets. Uh, Mystic is reporting that uh, nefarious IP addresses are accessing their honeypots. Microsoft Sentinel is showing anomalous activity. So a lot of different data that it's correlating on your behalf. So that's the first step in making this actionable. So if there's an indicator and Threat Intel is alerting on it, it's something that you'll want to look at. You get a hit count as far as how many incidents and alerts have been observed. So if you're looking for a place to start, the one at the top, the one that you're seeing probably in the largest quantity, may be a good starting point for your investigation. Then we have a look at incidents, and so I'll also show you how that fleshes out when we use uh, example indicators. So we'll go back to the top and run through a few scenarios. So the first scenario that I want to use is an IP address. And so I'll put it in there and free text search. So the IP address is malicious. It's related to Tor activity. And so as it searches, you'll see that it indexed all of those 250 or so data tables. It doesn't matter if I have the data table or not. It matters if I have the column. So any data set is going to function ideally with this. Um, so if you do or do not have a data table, it will still function with the available data that you do have. And so in this scenario, I've seen this quite a few times in my security events. It's coming in several times through my thread Intel feeds, meaning it's it's likely a bad IP. And I'm also seeing device and network events, which makes me concerned. Uh, is that data going inbound and outbound? Either way, it's a threat and it's something that I'm going to need to look at. Indicators over time is going to give me the win. So in the last week, it started on Friday, April 15th, and it looks like there were several events within security alerts seems to have fallen off over the weekend and then begun again earlier this week. So this is highlighting the story of the win to help me focus that investigation a tad bit further when I'm looking for it. When I go down into Threat Intel Alerts, Mystic's Honeypot is again letting us know that this is likely a botnet. The IP address is being reported as malicious. We have seen this in Microsoft Sentinel security incidents and in our alerts. So I go down to security incidents, and it looks like we have the three of them that we've observed over the last week or so. So the incident is saying we recommend this IP address for blocking. Over here in the entities, we can see the IP address that we free text search. It's involved in all of these security incidents. 
So we probably want to do something about it. That's where we go into Microsoft Sentinel security incidents to conduct our investigation and implement our responses. And so as far as the timeline, the first security incident was April 18th. We know that this was actually observed a tad bit before that, you know, based on our timeline, the 15th is, is when it started. So we likely have more than one incident involved here. We can see our previous alerts and our entities. And so if I add our IP address again, you'll see that it is related with this incident. So I wanna provide more details as far as what's going on. And so it seems this is part of a, a larger attack. Um, there's several IP addresses that are involved in here, but the one that we focused on is within this group. <clears throat> I'm able to explore the timeline in a little bit more depth as well as the entities that are involved. And when I come to the point that I want to make a response, I'm going to go to view playbooks. But I'm going to decide that this IP address is something that I don't want in my environment anymore. So what I'm going to do is block the IP address on my Cisco Firepower IPS, saying that if it attempts to access my environment internally or externally again, I want that to be blocked. You'll notice that I'm still in the workbook. We never left the workbook and it's called contextual view or custom view. We do that to where you can stay focused on uh, the functions you're performing without having to open a lot of tabs or re-authenticate. So a much smoother user experience and how you investigate. So next I'm gonna add a new indicator. So a new scenario, I'm gonna put a host name in there. <clears throat> and so when I add a host name, it's going to index the environment as well. Um, and you'll notice that the host name wasn't involved in many of my data tables, um, likely because of normalization that it might not be exactly that name. And it's not coming up in threat until alerts. Generally, you're not going to get a host name involved there. But when I look at security incidents, Sentinel has seen this involved in security incidents. So you'll notice how I moved from, is it there, I'm not seeing it, is it a threat until I'm not seeing it to wait a minute. Sentinel is telling me that there's uh, unusual activity associated with this indicator in my environment. So I'm gonna pick the first one, just like we did before. You'll notice that it is involved as an entity in this incident. Uh, looks like it happened today. So when I go to investigate, I can get the five W's, not super important for now. This is related to uh, unexpected access to an SAP workload. We can investigate. We can see which IP address it's coming from, as well as the host name that's being targeted. And just like we did before, once we complete our investigation, we deem that a response is necessary. We're able to implement that from here. So a few different things that I might do here, I would probably run the Firepower IPS again against the IP, um, block it in service now. The host name will require an investigation package. So there's gonna be more than one automation that I'd like to, to do here. You'll notice that these are on demand. Sentinel is configured to where if you want SOAR to execute on your behalf, you're able to do that automatically. Or during the course of your investigation, if you decide that you want to run it on demand, that's what we're doing here for response. So now we're back to the Threat Intel workbook, and I wanted to show an example of something a little bit more interesting. So if I have a partial indicator, so for this one, it's half of my demo user principal name, I can run that and as a partial, get an idea if it was anywhere within my workload. And so as a partial, I'm actually getting the pattern of life or the user entity behavior analytics around myself as a user. And I was able to do that with a partial. This is beneficial if you might know some of the indicator, but not all of it. And you wanna know if it's potentially in your data. So in this example, um, it looks like me as a user, TJ, I'm doing a lot of querying in Microsoft Sentinel. So that's going to be really normal um, for the work that we do day to day. Um, AAD non-interactive sign-in logs mean I'm extending sessions, so longer sessions involved. Azure activity means I'm changing things and, and moving throughout the environment. Sign-in logs are, are standard authentications. Uh, my behavior and identity logs are saying I might be doing something slightly unusual. Um, 
we're going to compare me to my peers and also get some identity info. So if I need to go in at a 400 level in any of these areas, you'll notice I'm able to navigate it without knowing KQL. If I do want to see this and take this further with KQL, this button right here will take me right into the query to where I can explore at a, a more of a 400 level. So my pattern of life is, is a bit of a bell curve. Looks like pretty standard week, plus to work through the weekend, and here we are today. So, all right, partial indicator. I guess I'm not in threat intel, good for today. But security incidents, I do have a few incidents. So right here, you can see that I'm involved with creation of anomalous resources. I now see the full indicator. So I'm able to grab that, and I could continue an investigation on to where I look for the full indicator, which is going to provide more data and more isolation into where I'm involved. And so if this was an anomalous user, I'd come back to Sentinel incidents, run through to see what's associated and go to investigate. So it turns out there's actually a lot of anomalous resource access from a lot of different folks being correlated. And so if I decide that maybe me and the other folks involved in this are an immediate threat to my environment and I need to box them out. I could go in and block the Azure Active Directory user. I'm not going to click this button right now because I don't want to box myself out of the demo, but this is how we would respond if we wanted to block that user. And there's different ways to do it, but just notice an on-demand scan is the fastest way that a SOC analyst or threat intel analyst would be able to do this. Go back to the Threat Intel workbook for another scenario. So, in this example, I have a file hash. I don't have the entire thing, I just have a partial of that file hash. So, it's a SHA 256 hash. I just copied the back half of it and executed it through the environment. My data tables aren't seeing it. It doesn't mean it's not there, it means that it's likely in a dynamic subfield. Indexing that can be kind of challenging at times. And so if I have the full, I'll start to get a little bit more targeted to see where I might see it in my data. Threat Intel Alert is not really giving me anything on it. But in my security incidents, I've seen this file hash before in, in quite a few places. So um, when I run through this, I check my entities. It looks like it's a PowerShell script. Pen test script doesn't give me a super good feeling about what it might be. But as I roll down in here, I see there's different file hashes. What I pasted was the back half of this SHA-256 hash. So I was able to pick that up within the incident. So that makes me concerned. So I don't really know what's going on. I don't want to block anything, but I do want to investigate that file a tad bit further. So I can run through my investigation. You'll notice I'm sim basically summarizing this. When you guys do this in practice, there'll be definitely your procedures, your thought, and a different way of doing it. But once I complete the investigation and I designate the responses required, maybe I just want to collect an investigation package. So on Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, I'm able to run an investigation package to say, I need you to index this machine and pull back an investigation package where I can look at that file in a lot more depth, uh, more, more so forensic style to get an idea um, if that's good or bad. What if I want to index a file type? Let's say I've got a file type in my environment and I wanna know uh, if it's there and where it's there. This example, I just put a standard path for Windows PowerShell. And when I'm looking through my indicators, I see that it is running. So PowerShell is running in security events and also my VM process logs. If I look at it over time, it seems like it's pretty normal. Like there's not a spike. You know, it seems like that runs throughout my environment, which, you know, is normal, right? PowerShell is, is a legitimate tool. We may have administrators using that for legitimate functions. It's not gonna come in, in threat intelligence alerts. It's not really a standard indicator. Um, but in my security incidents, I'm again seeing this involved. Uh, I can see that there's a brute force malware attack involved here. And so when I check it, I can see within the entities that it was involved as the uh, process that was run. Also, if it happened to be a parent or a child process, I'm going to see that as well. So I'm like, wait a minute, like maybe PowerShell wasn't what was executed, but it was involved in the parent process or a child process. 
And so just kind of interesting to be able to check the health of your environment like that and just look a little bit deeper to see if something like a, a file name or a file type is being used. What if uh, my CISO comes into my office in the security operations center and asks my team about log4j and says, have we ever seen log4j in the environment? Where's the first place that I check? We've got a lot of really good content at Microsoft Sentinel to help you out. If you want to research it from an Intel perspective, this is a good tool to get started with. So put it in there. I can see that I've had seven security alerts that somehow involve log4j. And it looks like they're occurring pretty commonly, right? So maybe something that I care about. Nothing within Threat Intel, not for necessarily that file name, but you will get associated things during your research. We're not going to get too deep into that area. Uh, no security incidents. So I'm like, OK, I'm in a good place. Right now, what I would do is delve into the alerts to figure out why Log4j is alerting. And the last scenario we'll do is a piece of malware. So what if we're worried about Mimikatz, which is a tool within a hack suite not something that a normal user is going to be running, something that we're definitely going to care about. We should not be seeing this in the environment for anybody other than <clears throat> an authorized red team or pen tester. So Mimikatz also has a lot of security alerts. This is something that I'm going to care about. I shouldn't be seeing any of these if I'm not aware of it. I'm not going to see any threat intelligence alerts, but Sentinel has seen a lot of security incidents that are involved here. And so the one on the top, uh, I can see which user is running this, as well as when they ran it. So that user ran it on the 15th of March. Uh, when I want to go in to explore, I'm able to do that. See the entities that are involved. So it looks like there's actually a few files that I care about now that are associated with Mimikatz, probably spawn child processes that are coming from it. I can see the host that's running it. I can see the user that executed it. And then when I investigate, uh, I pop in as well to decide what I need to do and where I need to go. In this example, there's probably going to be several actions that I want to take uh, in order to address this within the incident response cycle. And so that's one thing that, that I might need to think about as far as what do I want to execute within my team's uh, standard operating procedures. A lot of these I'm going to want to block or at least quarantine. So the file type, the AAD user account, putting an intrusion prevention signature in, creating service now tickets, Sentinel incidents, um, a JIRA and ADO items, blocking it in my Palo Alto firewall. I'm probably going to execute all these in parallel, and I can either configure the automation to do it on my behalf within my response times, which is good, or I might want to put a human analyst in the middle to decide, you know, where do I want to execute these functions. And so blocking would be one. We'd also include the investigate package as well and a few other automations for enrichment to get a good idea. But that'll give you the confidence when you're hunting with something, you can use Microsoft Sentinel Threat Intelligence to make your life easier and be as effective as possible in researching these threats. So we have for today's demo. Back to you, Lily. Thanks, TJ. That was an awesome demo, and it's it's really great to see how we can bring all the indicators into one place and also be able to action them directly from Microsoft Sentinel. So thanks, everyone, for joining us today. We recommend that you check out the Threat Intelligence Workbook in Microsoft Sentinel, and as TJ mentioned, let us know your thoughts directly in the survey. Thanks again. Bye. Thanks, team.